Welcome to AATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we are discussing about COPD, Gold Guidelines for COPD, its clinical manifestations, treatment and all the newer aspects of COPD. We know that COPD is a chronic progressive airway disease where there is progressive obstruction of airway. It is not reversible completely and it's a progressive disease during the time period patient can have recurrent exacerbations especially it can be infective as exacerbations these patients can mainly have small airway disease and some patients can have parenchymal destruction small airway disease is mainly seen in obstructive bronchiolitis Parenchymal destruction is seen in emphysema. Chronic bronchitis is one of the types of uh, COPD. By definition, it is cough with expectoration for most of the days for at least three months of a year for more than two consecutive years. There are three important types, simple chronic bronchitis, chronic obstructive bronchitis, chronic mucopurulent bronchitis so chronic simple bronchitis means hypersecretion of mucus obstructive bronchitis means patient can have sputum production and airflow obstruction chronic mucopurulent bronchitis means with purulent sputum now we can see the clinical features of chronic bronchitis chronic productive cough for many years cough increases during winter season Sputum is mostly mucoid and sometimes patient can have exacerbation. There the patient will become uh, breathless and sputum will become purulent. Breathlessness usually a late feature in chronic bronchitis. Increased use of accessory muscles you can see when the patient is having symptoms. Diminished chest expansion on auscultation, bilateral crepitations and wheeze. Emphysema is another type of COPD where lungs are maximally expanded. Emphysema is an abnormal permanent enlargement of the distal air spaces distal to the terminal bronchiole accompanied by destruction of their walls. X-ray shows you can see the X-ray here black in color. So more air is trapped inside the lungs. You can see the tubular heart that means heart is compressed from sides because of air trapped in the lungs. Diaphragms are compressed and pushed down. So all these things are features of emphysema. More air is trapped inside the lungs. So all this air may contain very high levels of carbon dioxide also. Symptoms of emphysema are progressive breathlessness and minimal cough. Whereas in bronchitis, more cough, less breathlessness. But most of the patients will have a mix of emphysema with chronic bronchitis. Patient can have barrel shaped chest, tracheal descent during inspiration, hoover sign that is inward motion of the lower lateral rib cage with inspiration. Cyanosis can be there. First lip breathing is another important clinical feature. Hyper resonant nodes on the lung percussion. Cardiac dullness is obliterated. Liver dullness is shifted down. Vesicular breath sounds with prolonged expression and wheeze with crepitations. More crepitations are seen in chronic bronchitis, but here also you can get crepitations. Chronically, these patients can have pink puffering that is due to secondary polycythemia and pulse lip breathing. Global initiative for chronic obstructive lung disease are, is uh, that's a uh, major classification for COPD that is called as gold staging system for COPD severity zero one two three four stagings are given for this uh, gold staging one is mild two is moderate three is severe four is very severe all depending upon the FE V1 by FVC ratio less than 
FPV1, more than 80% of predicted value may have symptoms. Grade 2, moderate FPV1, FVC ratio less than 70% with FPV1 that is uh, that can be calculated by a uh, pulmonary function test, lung function test. FPV1, 50 to 80%. Grade 3, severe FPV1, 30 to 50%. Grade 4, very severe, FEV1 less than 30% of predicted value or FEV1 less than 50% of the predicted value plus severe chronic symptoms. This is gold staging for COPD severity. Now you can see the severe, uh, differences between emphysema and chronic bronchitis. You can see here. So there are a lot of differences between uh, uh, bronchitis and emphysema. No differences between asthma and COPD. It is very important in emergency room to understand whether the patient is having COPD or asthma because COPD is always an infective exacerbation. Asthma is mostly an inflammatory exacerbation. You can see here, here the differences. Asthma, it is mainly a larger airway disease. COPD is a smaller airway disease. But COPD patients can have a mix of small and larger airway disease. Family history is seen in asthma. Family history is not very important in asthma or COPD. Smoking history may not be there in asthma. COPD, it is there. Mostly it is there. Childhood history is there in asthma. It may not be there in COPD. Inflammation is eosinophil or CD4 driven, whereas in COPD it is neutrophilic or CD8 driven. Reversibility of airway obstruction is seen in asthma more than COPD. It's a reversible disease. Intermittently, patient can have symptoms, whereas in COPD it's progressive disease and it is not co not completely reversible. Progression is mainly seen in COPD. Exacerbations are inflammatory in asthma and infective in COPD. Steroids are definitely useful in asthma because it's an inflammatory disease. COPD, it is not that much indicated, but we can try steroids. Antibiotics are mainly used in COPD because that is mainly infective exacerbation. FEV1 is low in asthma. It's also low in COPD, but reversibility is very important. If the reversibility is significant, that is asthma. Reversibility is not very good. Then it is COPD. After salbutamol, if the FEV1 improves, then it goes in favor of asthma. If the improvement is not significant, it is goes in favor of COPD. Because COPD is a progressive irreversible disease, asthma is an intermittent reversible disease. Now we can see the most common infectious uh, or infectious causes for COPD. The organism which can produce infections in COPD are Streptococcus, H. influenza, Moroxella, Chlamydia, Mycoplasma and various vir viruses. Severe exacerbation can be due to Pseudomonas, other gram-negative enteric bacilli. Common lung infections are mainly gram-positive in a normal person with a normal lung. Community occurred infections in normal lung all always, always due to gram positive cocci. But whereas in COPD or in a damaged lung, you can get both gram positive and gram negative infections that we have seen here H influenza, Moroxel, and all not commonly seen in a normal lung. Now we can see what is the ER management of acute exacerbation. Take care of the patient's airway, breathing, circulation. Start the patient on high flow oxygen, but remember that in asthma and all, we can give high flow oxygen and maintain the saturation very high and above 95 we can keep. But whereas in COPD, we should not try to attain the saturation very high. If the saturation is more than 85, we should be happy. We should not increase the oxygen oxygenation in this type of patients. Now, once the patient is stabilized 
uh, with airway breathing circulation and starting on oxygen propped up position we have to start on nebulization the most important nebulization in asthma in emergency room is ipatropium bromide because these are the drugs which act on the smaller airways it can be inhaled or nebulized it's an anticholinergic uh, drug they are also called as short acting muscarinic agents it has got a bronchodilator effect most of the time it is available as a combination with salbutamol or levosalbutamol so we can give ipatropium bromide with salbutamol combination salbutamol act in the larger airways ipatropium act in the smaller airways we should understand that copd is predominantly a smaller airway disease and sometimes the secretions are very high so ipatropium is a better drug than salbutamol but many patients can have larger airway disease also along with small airway disease so you can use ipatropium bromide with salbutamol so combinations of levosalbutamol with ipatropium bromide is available that can be given if the patient is having an meter dose inhaler or rota caps that has got similar actions like similar bioavailability like your nebulization so if they have that you can try that also but remember we have to use ipatropium or triatropium for copd patients with uh formatrol or salbutamol something like that so that is the emergency management of uh, copd now supportive therapies like we already discussed that this patients can have infective exacerbation lot of gram negative plus gram positive infections can be there in the lens so ideal drug for this is a broad spectrum antibiotic like kinlon moxifloxacin or levofloxacin can be given in acute conditions the only thing in india these all are western guidelines in india we are more worried about tuberculosis so we can try to avoid kinlons but they are the drug of choice in uh, this type of infections gram positive with gram negative or we can try amoxicillin clavulanic acid or go for a gram negative coverage with gram positive coverage like ceftriaxone with augmentin ceftriaxone with amoxicillin ceftriaxone with crystalline penicillin something like that but ideally the classic drug which can be used in acute exacerbation of copd is quinolones because they cover gram positive and gram negative infection moxifloxacin is the drug of choice recommended in most of the textbooks steroids can be given it it may have some effect in acute exacerbation but not like in asthma in asthma steroids are the drug of choice they in, reduces the inflammation in asthma but here since it's an infection with some inflammation after covering the infection we can give steroids that will have some effect magnesium sulfate infusion is shown to reduce the recurrent infections in copd recurrent exacerbations in copd acutely it may not help but long term effect is shown in many studies vitamin d also has got some effect on recurrent lung infections so that should be corrected hypokalemia is one of the important problem in copd because or asthma because we are giving nebulizations like salbutamol and patient is continuously using the chest muscles so there will be high chance of hypokalemia that reduces the muscle strength to breathe so correction of hypokalemia hypomagnesemia is very very important these patients may require high protein diet to build up the muscles especially respiratory muscles and low carbohydrate diet is very very important end product of carbohydrate metabolism is carbon dioxide so we should try to reduce the carbohydrate diet in this type of patients when we are discharging these patients we have to give vaccination for h influenza and pneumococci 
Aminophilins can be given in acute exacerbations of COPD. We can give infusion, but nowadays we are not routinely using because of its arrhythmogenic property. We have better drugs like nebulizations. So we are now nowadays we are not using these drugs routinely. However, they got very good effect in the lungs, which which can produce uh, bronchodilatation and some effect on uh, diaphragm. However, they are not recommended nowadays because of its arrhythmogenic properties. Now, patients who are having COPD, non-invasive ventilation should be tried first itself. If there is no bullae or if the patient is, have, have, is fully conscious, NIV is the choice in emergency room. If the respiratory rate is more than 25, mild to moderate respiratory acidosis, hypercarbia, this is the choice of uh, uh, oxygenation in emergency room. Mechanical ventilation is indicated in severe respiratory failure, respiratory rate more than 35, hypercarbia more than 60 mm of mercury, severe acidosis, respiratory arrest, altered mental status, hypotension, cardiac failure, shock, non-invasive ventilation, failure. All these conditions we can go for mechanical ventilation. Now we will talk about long term oxygen therapy. We already discussed that COPD patients may not require very high flow oxygen. If you try to increase the oxygenation in COPD, they will go to respiratory arrest. So try to avoid over oxygenation in COPD patient. You have to just keep the saturation above 85 that is more than enough. Whereas in asthma and all we have to keep the oxygenation very high more than 95 percent. Long term oxygen therapy is one important aspect of treatment chronic treatment in COPD patient like once we are stabilize the patient in emergency room when we are discharging we can start LTOT therapy that is very small dose small dose of oxygen like two to four liters per minute around 16 hours or at least 12 hours at home it should be continuously given slowly improves the uh, pulmonary uh, activities and it reduces the pressure in the uh, vasculatures of the lung. There will be endothelial damage in uh, pulmonary arterioles because of chronic hypoxemia, endothelial, endothelial hypertrophy can occur that will produce pulmonary hypertension, secondary pulmonary hypertension because of COPD. When we give very low dose oxygen continuously, that endothelial hypertrophy can be prevented. So this will arrest the process and the COPD with its pulmonary hypertension will not be prog progressed. So that is very important that we should start LTOT for all patients who is having suspected early pulmonary hypertension. Now we have discussed about various clinical aspects of COPD and its management. Thank you.